This project started off as many of my good ideas do, finding something random at the flea market. In this case, it was a tiny, portable CRT television set with a couple of issues, but it's 10 bucks, so I picked it up. Two issues I needed to address. One, it had the wrong power supply with it, wrong voltage and polarity, and two, I needed a way to get signal to it. Luckily, it had an external antenna port that I could use. For solving the issue of getting signal to the TV, what I needed was a coax to aux adapter so I could use the external antenna port. Digging around online, turned out that the best deal I could find was on an external antenna kit that came with an antenna and three adapters, including the one I needed. After that, the issue was power. The TV requires 7.5 volts on a center negative barrel plug. So that's not exactly easy to find, and I wasn't sure if I was going to get the correct size barrel plug if I ordered a standalone power supply, so I ordered an adjustable one that came with several different plugs where I could choose the voltage I needed. After this, it was time to plug everything in and figure out what I wanted to hook up to the CRT. I knew at this point I kind of wanted to make this into a portable setup, so I went with a Sega Genesis because I had a Model 2, and it was pretty much the smallest thing I had that could hook up to it easily. So despite things being a little cramped on my desk, when I got everything finally connected, there was the signal. False alarm, I just forgot to select the correct frequency range. Fix that, and now there's a signal. Just no vertical hold for now. Now that I was working, I tested out three different games. Jurassic Park, which refused to have anything resembling vertical hold. Vector Man, which went into the wrong type of split screen and Sonic 3, which actually worked except for occasionally where it seemed like a certain sound effect would trigger the screen to just scroll once. The other thing is, after this I did some more testing and eventually the vertical hold just sorted itself out, so go figure. At this point the project sat on a shelf for a bit while I looked around for a carrying case I could use. The only time I did do something with it, other than just playing on it was I brought it into work one time to see how everyone would like it. In a Pringles box from that time I bought an old motherboard. And actually it was at work where I found the case I would end up using. So this had been sitting around for a while and eventually I ended up asking my boss about it. Turned out it was just sitting empty. He said I could have it. So I brought it home and gave it a bit of a cleanup. Should mention this age new footage since I lost the stuff from when I first got it. You can note that I took a carrying strap off an old laptop bag and put it on to this case to make it a little easier to lug around. Alright, so this is the phone that's currently inside the case. It looks like it was cut out for the tools that are in there. And also looks like something has spilled, so I'm gonna have to clean that up, but hopefully that shouldn't be too bad. Back with the world's Worst overhead cable, because I'm going to make fun of So, took a bit, but I got this all cleaned out. Yeah, that's my same frame. Yeah, whatever that blue oily residue and spill or whatever that was. Uh, it came out with some dish soap, a bit of water, a lot of scrubbing, and around half a roll of paper towel. So, now, I want to plan out where everything goes in here. Oh yeah, this is the next day from the previous clip, but that's irrelevant. So I'm thinking, a spot for that there, there, power adapter, this one back here, that may be there, or there. Actually, yeah, I like that. Then for game cartridges, maybe have a slot here. I'm not entirely sure. 
Still need to sort that one out. And then the final piece would be behind the flag. That is where I probably have the controller and the RF converter. Alright, so I now need to go find where I can get some foam and cut it. Surprisingly, the most difficult part of this to get was the slab of foam. Might just be a by area, but upholstery shops, which is where I got this from, have some really weird hours. So after I think a month and a half, I finally got the foam, and it was time to cut it out. So laid everything down on top of it, traced out the Genesis and TV, and made the initial cut. With it taking me 15 minutes just to cut out the hole for the TV, I realized a couple things. One, I maybe should have looked up how to cut a pastry foam, and two, probably should have had a better tool than just a pocket knife. But ignoring that, the next hour I spent cutting this out went great. Right, so everything's cut, everything's together, let's see how it turned out. So as you can see, I made some changes beyond the initial layout plan. TV and Genesis are still there, but now RF adapter and the controller sit on top of it. Two games go behind, space here. If I wanted to, I could put another slot here. It's just kind of hard to cut the foam when it's skinny. And then Sega Genesis power adapter and TV stand are here. The antenna just lives in there if I ever want to use the TV as a, well, TV. And then up here, we've got the power cord for the TV and a power bar because with the two wall warts, they don't always fit in a regular outlet. And that way I only take up one plug if I'm somewhere crowded. Now, let's show it off in style. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching me do this project. Still getting used to editing footage from when I do projects rather than just game footage. Wanted to include a bit of every stage of it. So let me know what you thought of that, or if you're curious to see what the next project I'm going to work on is, I do have one underway called Project Shoebox, and this is the only hint you get for it. Otherwise, if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments. Or if you want to check out me being a idiot in video games, there's plenty to choose from. Anyway, I hope you all have a good day, and until next time, I guess interactions exist.